Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel, where you get daily and consistent hot topics in music, entertainment, reality TV, and more. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. And today I wanted to talk about the BET Awards that aired last night. I wasn't on the fence if I was going to even recap it, talk about it, just because the BET Awards for me over the years have been hit or miss. But don't get me wrong. I love the fact that we have BET. I love the fact that we have the BET Awards because it celebrates Black music. And if you didn't know, June is Black Music Appreciation Month. And I've been celebrating it on my community tab. If you haven't checked it out and some of the up and coming artists, including myself, that I have featured there. But I love the element of up-and-coming artists that are celebrated on the smaller stage during the BET Awards. And we saw some really great talent. It will be incredible to see what that talent will do in the future in regards to being discovered right there on the BET stage. But there were a lot of memorable moments. But, you know, let's start from the beginning. Besides the performances, Taraji P. Henson was the host. And I love Taraji. But can we talk? I miss the days of a Chris Rock or a Monique hosting these award shows. I love comedians. I think comedians just are the staple for being the master of ceremonies when it comes to these events. And there are so many really great black comedians that could have done it. And no shade to Taraji. There were some really funny Taraji uh, moments during the show, especially when she portrayed Erica Badu and she was talking to Method Man. Can we talk about Method Man looking like he just jumped out of the 90s, looking the same and probably looking even better? All right. Um, but I didn't love Taraji as the host. I, I wanted to have more moments of laughter, especially after 2020. This is one of the first big events that we've had you know, and when it comes to an award show, it would have been nice to have a comedian really bring it together. I, I want to laugh during the host moments, not just to have someone there to, to segue us from, from point A to point B. Taraji was decent, but will we be talking about Taraji hosting these awards years from now? Probably not. One person, though, I feel that stands out when hosting and she's not even a comedian is Erica Badu. Erica Badu is actually very funny and really stood out in her hosting duties of the Soul Train Awards. We might have to get her, but like I said, there's so many up and coming talents, comedians that could, could have hosted this. Or even if you want to take some of the amazing, incredible social media comedians that we've discovered over the de over the you know pandemic, that would have been really cool to have them all host it and come together. Also, can we talk about Taraji? Was it makeup or did she do something to her face? I don't know. I was just looking at Taraji like, what's happening? Anyways, I'm digressing. Let's get into my notes of the awards show. So the show opened up with Kirk Franklin and Lil Baby. I, look, you know, Kirk Franklin, you know, we posted a video of the situation between him and his son, and we don't need to get into that, but I kind of look at him with the, Side, I mean, I've always looked at him with the side eye. Can we talk? Anyways, the song was great, though. One thing I have to give it to him, he's a great producer, great songs, but I could do without, can I get a, <laughs> oh, God. Like, I get it, you know, church vibe. I could have did without Kirk Franklin. I love the choir. Lil Baby was a nice little addition. I'm not a big fan of, of his work, but okay. Um, her also performed her hers having an incredible i remember listening to her ep and i also remembering her you know before she was her and she was just gabby wilson i think she's done so many incredible things and it's like this girl is so young oscar winner grammy winner just so many different monumental moments are happening she played two instruments during this performance i just love the mu musicality the seriousness the authenticity that she brings to music and what she brings to her performances she's incredible and i'm excited to see what she does and i love the story that she told when she won her her bet award and she said that you know she was on a country music stage and they asked her you know how does it feel to be here in regards to you know not this not being you know, your normal element. And she had to remind them that, you know, R&B music is at the root 
of a lot of the music, especially country music. I, I love her. I, the new generation is just unapologetically black and I'm loving it. It's going, it's just, uh, anyways, congrats to her on, on her award uh, and great performance. But speaking of the awards, you know, the reason why I used to side eye the BET awards all the time was because I was like, how are these awards chosen? And a lot of the times in the past, I have to say they got it pretty right this particular, you know, year in regards to who won. In past years, I'm like, oh, that person's winning? And I always used to side eye the BET awards because like, how are you picking these awards? Why is this person winning? Is this person winning because they're the only ones willing to show up? Which we've heard, we, not even just the BET awards, we've heard about the Grammys, people um, saying that the Grammys is very political and people are winning the awards, not because of talent, but because of their stature in the music industry. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but I do feel like they did get it right this year. There were some incredible performances and some incredible winners that deserve to win. Speaking of winners, Megan the Stallion. People were shading Megan because, you know, WAP won and she forgot to thank Cardi. But she, the next award, because she won more, uh, she made sure she thanked Cardi for their incredible song, WAP. They're having an incredible... Female hip hop is having an incredible time. You know, there was a 10 year period where it was just Nicki Minaj and she held it down. She held it down. Speaking of Nicki Minaj, before I forget, during the red carpet, little Kim was being interviewed and she, she was asked if she would do a versus and she said, yes. And they asked with who, you know, we all assumed that she should do it with Foxy Brown. That they were the two female artists of their time. And we heard rumors that that was, that was in the works. Nothing has happened. But when asked about this, Lil' Kim said on the red carpet, she wants to do it against Nicki Minaj. And I'm like, I didn't see it because like I said, Versus seems to be, you know, your peers that you're going up against. But then someone in the comment section said to me, well, it would be kind of cool if you want to kind of do old school versus new school. And who technically could go up against a Lil' Kim of, of her time? And who technically could go up against a Nicki Minaj of her time, because remember, there really wasn't any other major female artist doing it when Nicki Minaj started and and doing it at the level that Nicki Minaj was doing it. You can you can and I know you guys will in the comments battle it out. You know, who could Cardi go up against uh, or who could Nicki Minaj go up against or who Lil' Kim could go up against? Because technically, I love Foxy Brown. But if it was a Foxy versus Lil' Kim, when we talk about hits. It might be somewhat close, depending, because we know we've seen we've seen these verses and we're like, oh, this person's gonna wash this person. And then we see it and then we're like, well, it's all about song choice. What are the songs you're choosing? But here's what I'm thinking in regards to Lil' Kim and Nicki Minaj. I want to see this happen. And the reason why I want to see this happen is because what it, what versus has been for the culture is breaking down those walls, you know, reuniting, celebrating each other. I think that would be a great way for Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim to make peace. I think that would be a great way. I, I know it'd be competitive and it would be very weird because Lil' Kim was from a different era of female hip hop and hip hop. And Nicki Minaj is very still, still very much relevant, but also in her own period of hip hop. But I like the idea of old school versus new school and also celebration of these two queens of hip hop. So I'm actually open to the idea, but will Nikki do it? I think that could be such a, an incredible moment and a huge moment for Versus. I know they're actually probably trying to make this happen. I just don't know if Nikki will do it. There's been a lot of things said, a lot of things said, but if they could do it, if they could broker a peace agreement, I would watch that. And I think it'd probably be the biggest Versus ever. And then can we end it after that? Can we just end a versus? I'm joking. I'm joking because I'm sure there's many other moments that we can we can have with versus. But I hear what you guys are saying. Isn't versus over? Are we done with versus? Not quite. Not quite. But I thought it was interesting that she said Nicki Minaj, and I wasn't sure if it was people were saying that it might be shade that she that's who she wants to go up against. But I also think maybe she's tired of the beef. Lil' Kim is tired of, like, why should there be beef? That's not what female hip-hop was when Lil' Kim reigned supreme. They all were just unified. 
And I think it would be incredible to have some of your favorite female hip hop artists be a part of that versus, you know, have the Queen Latifahs, have Moni Love was performed in tribute to Queen Latifah. I'm skipping ahead, but Moni Love, oh my, I was like, wow, she still has it. <laughs> but anyways, but speaking of female hip hop, Megan Thee Stallion had an incredible night. She performed her, her hit song, Thought Ish, and <sighs> Megan Thee Stallion has stepped up. She's this opportunity, you know, she has incredible music, incredible everything. And she really has stepped up and rose to the moment that she's been given. Now is her time and she's really stepping it up from looks to fashion to songs. She has it, she has that it factor and I love it. She looked incredible during her performance. I don't care about any of the other stuff that's going on between her and the baby or Tory Lanez. Eh, I don't want to think about that stuff. But when it comes to the music and to the star quality, she has reigned supreme. There's a lot of female hip hop artists, you know, in the game now. And Cardi is doing well. Congrats to Cardi. If you missed it, Cardi announced that she is pregnant. Pretty much it was the first introduction was seeing her perform with the Migos. And we're like, oh, she's pregnant. And then she made an official announcement of her pregnancy on her social media Second, baby number two with Offset. You know, they've had ups and downs in their relationship. And I'm sure that that will continue. But look, I'm happy that she's able to do this for herself. Cardi loves being a mother. She loves being an artist. And she's always trying to find a balance of trying to do both. And I know a lot of people are like, Cardi, we need the music. We need the music. No, Cardi needs to do what she wants to do. She wants to have a family. Let her have her family. Music industry will wait for her. I love the fact she gave us a little, a little wop <laughs> in between. And I'm excited to see what Cardi has waiting for us. Because she also is a great, another artist that has risen to the moment that she's been given in hip hop, in hip hop, in pop music, in music in general. But like I said, Megan Thee Stallion looked great. Um, her performance was really great. She won a couple of awards. Congrats to her. Sidebar. Can we talk a little tea? This might get fallen in the mix of everything, but Lena Waithe was there. And, you know, Lena Waithe was with her girlfriend for a very long time, and then they broke up in a very messy way. But people, I guess because Lena Waithe is not a major celebrity, she's, you know, people know her, but she's more behind the scenes. Anyone just, just going to slip over that Cynthia Erivo, Oscar-nominated Cynthia Erivo from Broadway, rumor on the street was that they were allegedly hooking up while Lena Waithe was still with her girlfriend and that Lena Waithe allegedly look, was a like a player. But I thought it was interesting. And I was like, is that Cynthia or is that just someone that looks like Cynthia Erivo? No, that was Cynthia Erivo as her date, maybe, at the awards. Are they together now? Happy Pride. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyways. Ja Jasmine Sullivan and Ari Lennox. I love. First of all, I love that song on it, on on Jasmine's album. They sounded incredible. She, they both looked incredible. I need that to be a video. We need that. She also won for album of the year. She brought her mother up because you know her mother was battling cancer, and I thought that was such a sweet moment. I love Jasmine Sullivan. She says, you know, you know, thank you to my fans that have you know stuck with me even though I take six year breaks. Jasmine, we got to stop that. Two years, maybe six years. But remember back in the day, a lot of artists used to take five, six year breaks. But in this industry of today, you can't even do that. But Jasmine, you're just so talented and you look amazing. We, we will continue to do that. We will continue to wait for you. Um, and congrats to her. Uh, Lil Nas X. Speaking of happy pride. Lil Nas X, though, everyone thought that he would be a one-hit wonder, but Lil Nas X has risen to the occasion. Another artist, another hip-hop artist that has risen to the occasion. I didn't realize how, what a nice singing voice Lil Nas X has. He's also the ultimate troll on social media. When people want to come at him, he's ready for them. His song, uh, Montero, look, anyways, <laughs> I know it's a longer title. Oh, Call Me By Your Name. There we go. Look, I'm not going to even edit this out. I'm just going to go straight forward, y'all. This is, we'll pretend this is like a live recap. But his performance, you know, he's done a couple of different performances of the same song. But this one 
was iconic. I was so impressed with his dance moves, his his performance, his just his ode to Michael Jackson. When he went to the Michael Jackson break from Remember the Time, one of my favorite videos from Michael Jackson, I was like, you are giving me, mind you, this is a young kid. He's young. And just the celebration of an artist like Michael Jackson continues, that Michael Jackson's music is just so iconic and will live on forever. I thought that was incredible. I love the oh, that when he did that, I was like, oh my gosh. And then he ended his performance with a kiss with a, a man. I know people were in there like, was that the first time ever on the BET Awards? I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. But to, to be young, black, gay, and alive in Pride Month, yes, Lil Nas X, you did the damn thing. And I'm excited to see what he continues to create and do. He is no longer a one. Well, he wasn't a one hit wonder because I know he had another hit right after his big song. Congrats, Lil Nas X. I'm excited to see what you're going to do in the future. Silk Sonic, you know, the group that makes Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. I have to say, I love the song, Leave the Door Open. Uh, they also premiered another song during their performance. It was an incredible performance. Anderson Pack, I didn't even realize he had those sort, sort of vocals, especially live. But Bruno Mars, now that man, we already knew he could sing, but I'm just always stunned every time I see him perform because I'm like, damn, not only can this man sing his face off, he's also an uber talented singer and songwriter and producer. And he's been doing that before he was in the front in front of us. And I remember that. But I'm excited. You know, he didn't have to create this other group, but I'm sure he had a vision for this group. And I like that he's so creative that he wants to do this. And he did say that the album is coming. I'm excited to hear it. And, you know, it's a vibe. He celebrates some of our greatest artists and music with what he creates. You know, some people say, you know, it's appropriation, but he celebrates the music and he does a great job with it. And, and they won a, an award as well. City Girls, uh, uh, you know, I'm not big on the City Girls. You already know I'm not a big hip hop head, but I do know the City Girls. And I like that these girls aren't just on stage, just, you know, rapping. They are dancing, they are performing. And I thought they had an incredible performance as well. It, th this night was really about, you know, I know it was about celebrating females, you know, the year of the female, but also it was really celebrating female hip hop. And their honoree, their big tribute was to Queen Latifah. As I mentioned to you earlier, Moni Love of Rhapsody, they celebrated her. Little Cam came out and celebrated her. I was like, this is incredible. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. People sleep on Little Kim as a performer. Little Kim is actually a really, really great live performer. But Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah has not aged. Queen Latifah is someone that we need to respect because not only is she an incredible rapper and singer and artist, she is an incredible producer and actor. And she's just done so many things that we don't even realize she's done and managed and uplifted so many other people's career. And she looks amazing. She looks amazing. I mean, I thought she might come out during Pride Month, but, you know, she's always been such a personal, um, keeping her personal life, you know, to herself and private. So I get it. I completely get it and I respect it. I would love it. And I'm sure there will be a day when Queen Latifah will speak about it. But I just thought maybe. But I'm sure she, I wish they would have panned. Did they pan down at Queen Latifah when not little Nod's ex kissed that man? I don't think so. They didn't. That would have been shady. They were they were paying tribute to her. But I know I would have been looking over. <laughs> Anyways, there were some really other great performances. I'm not going through all of the performances. Um, my my girl Andrew Day performed. You know she's having having an incredible year. She also won an award during the BET Awards. I'm excited to see what Andrew Day does. She did an incredible job with Billie Holiday, the United States versus Billie Holiday. I'm excited. I'm excited for music for the rest. We have a couple more days left of Pride Month and Black Music Appreciation Month. I want to know your thoughts, though, in the comment section. What was your favorite performance? What was your favorite moment? There were a few different moments from, from this award. Sweetie walking out like this with her dress because she couldn't. <laughs> so, Sweetie is a mood. I get why Sweetie is, a, you know, she has good songs too. Don't get me wrong. 
but she also has a great personality. And I love the fact that she's like, y'all, this dress is heavy. <laughs> she looked incredible, though. She looked incredible. As I said, I want to know your thoughts on the biggest moments of last night's BET Awards. Best performance. Who who do you think had the best performance? There were a couple of really good performances, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload.